Welcome to the futurist public intellectual. Poor Harvard. It's been attacked for affirmative action and its stubbornness to maintain it got it banned. Now Harvard is being scrutinized for its legacy admissions policy and the critics are trying to present legacy admissions as analogous to and therefore equally bad as affirmative action. However, these critics are wrong. It is disingenuous to present legacy admissions as affirmative action for elites. Affirmative action at Harvard was particularly bad because it was systematically rejecting students who were otherwise qualified simply for being Asian. That is unequivocally racial discrimination. However, there's a difference between unequal treatment of equally qualified applicants versus making an exception for an underqualified applicant. Legacy admissions looks somewhat alike with affirmative action because underqualified applicants are getting in, but the surrounding facts are different. Whether a black or Asian student gets in, from Harvard's perspective, it wouldn't make a difference. As long as they're academically qualified, who cares? Legacy admits fall into the same bucket as athletes, meaning that even if they're not academically qualified, Harvard considers them valuable for non-academic reasons. And that should be enough. Since racial discrimination is explicitly prohibited by the U.S. Constitution through the Reconstruction Amendments, the eventual demise of affirmative action was inevitable. But legacy admissions and athletes involve discrimination of a different sort, and this kind of discrimination should not necessitate government intervention. Humans are naturally going to be limited in their ability to excel in multiple things, especially since it's hard enough to be excellent in one thing. It's legitimate for an academic powerhouse like Harvard to want to also be a decent competitor in collegiate sports. Since athletes can't be realistically expected to excel in both their classes and the field, every school has to consider accepting athletic stars with underwhelming report cards. Similarly, a legacy admit brings something else to the table along with their underwhelming report cards. Money. Considering 75% of legacy white students would have been rejected by Harvard had it not been for their legacy status, these legacy applicants are definitely bringing bad grades. But why shouldn't legacy admissions be dismantled? Well, if Harvard voluntarily ends the practice, then that's fine, of course. But is there any legal basis for the government forcing Harvard to do so? No. Harvard University is a private institution, and there is no constitutional mandate that prohibits discrimination by wealth or legacy status. People need to remember that Harvard is essentially a private club, and as long as it doesn't contravene the law, it is free to engage in subjective decision-making. It's no surprise that with decades of strategic legacy admissions, Harvard was able to marshal the largest university endowment in the world at $50 billion. If we want to reform legacy admissions, perhaps we should consider doubling down on it. Since legacy admissions is mainly practiced because it encourages loyalty and subsequent donations to the prestigious institution, Harvard could simply be baldly open about it and say that while donations will not guarantee an admission, all underqualified legacy admits will require, say, a million dollar donation prior to matriculation. A lot of people don't seem to appreciate the fact that Harvard is one of the few universities that not only practices need blind admissions, but guarantees free tuition for students from families making less than $65,000 a year. Barring a constitutional prohibition, I don't understand why Harvard shouldn't take money from legacy students and give it to academically superior students who need financial aid. This is exactly what's happening now. If admitting legacy students 
is what allows poor geniuses to go to Harvard for free, then let Harvard practice legacy admissions. Thank you for listening to The Futurist Public Intellectual.